In the strum problem, a survey is being taken. The height of the instrument and the road is given, as well as the elevation at point A, the station at which the instrument is set. A radio survey is done by setting the instrument at a point and sighting to the road, which is the station at any of the numerous other points around the instrument. The instrument records the slope distance SD and the vertical angle VA between the instrument and the road. This graphical representation of the problem makes it clear that the vertical and horizontal distances between the instrument and the road can be found by treating this area as a right triangle. The VA will be the angle theta and the SD is the hypotenuse. Rearrange the sine and cosine function to solve for the HD and VD respectively. Excel can be a handy tool for tabulating data and presenting it in a neat manner. However, it is also very useful for performing iterations and other respective calculations. Similar to a calculator, but with a vast memory and workspace, Excel can analyze both simple and complex equations far more quickly than the same work will take to do by hand. Let's investigate the formatting abilities of Excel in preparation for solving the given vertical angle problem. There are three types of information that an Excel cell can contain. Letters, numbers, and formulas. When a cell is selected, the complete contents of the cell are shown here in the formula bar. The deselected cell in the workbook will show the result of that formula. There are a few options of how to deselect a cell after entering contents into it. Pressing Enter will select the cell below the one that was just typed into, pressing Tab will select the cell to the right, and pressing this check mark next to the formula bar will accept the contents of the cell without deselecting it. This can save time when entering a large amount of data. To remove the contents of a cell or range of cells, right-click within the selected range and select Clear Contents. This empties the cells of all of their contents. Another option is to delete cells. When this option is selected, a dialog box prompts the user to choose how to shift cells so that there won't be empty space where the cells are being deleted. By selecting to shift cells up, the columns to the right and left of the selection will stay undisturbed and the empty cells below the selection will be moved up. Let's begin entering the given vertical angle problem into Excel. By entering the given information as shown, with the dimensions in a separate cell from its label and units, this number-only cell can be referenced later by formulas in other cells. This is the Excel ribbon. Tabs above the ribbon display editing options in it when selected. Excel removes zeros after the last non-zero decimal place. To show more or less significant figures in a cell or range, use these two buttons in the Home tab. To improve clarity, I'm going to right align these labels and adjust the size of the columns. I also want to include the elevation at point A, which was also given. Now input the tabulated information. Use tab or enter to make entering rows or columns of data easier, respectively. Here, I would like to put the vertical angles in DMS, which is how they're given. I will insert the degree, minute, and second marks from the symbols prompt box, which can be opened from the ribbon under the insert tab. Another useful tool in Excel is its ability to copy the text or formula of one cell to any number of other cells by clicking and dragging the small black square at the bottom of the selected box. I can avoid having to insert these symbols for each reading by copying the format and then adjusting the actual numbers. As briefly mentioned before, it is better to have the numbers in separate cells from the units. That number-only cell can then be referenced by formulas elsewhere in the worksheet.
I've inserted three columns to separate the degrees, minutes, and seconds. I want this vertical angle label to extend over all three columns and be centered. There are many options to merge cells and edit the alignment of their contents in the Alignment section of the Home tab, including a one-stop button that accomplishes what I want. Now I can shrink the width of these columns. Double-clicking the edge of the column label will auto-adjust it to the width of the longest cell in that column. You might have noticed me do this previously to column E, which contains the units for the given information. To calculate the elevations, we will need the vertical angles to be in decimal degrees. Insert a new column and add the degrees, minutes, and seconds together. To tell Excel that the content of a cell is a formula, start the cell with an equal sign. To be added together, the measurements must all be converted to the same units. Because 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes, Dividing the minutes measurement by 60 will convert it to degrees. One minute is equal to 60 seconds, so the seconds measurement should be divided by 60 twice, or divided by 3,600. Now, when copying a cell that contains a formula by clicking and dragging the black box at its bottom right corner, any cells referenced by that formula are considered relative to that cell. What this means is that because this cell, K3, contains a formula that references the three cells in the columns directly to its left, H3 through J3, then copying this formula down to the next row's cell, K4, will copy the formula with the exception that it will reference cells H4 through J4 instead of H3 through J3. Therefore, we can copy this first formula containing cell down the entire table, and Excel will calculate that formula given the information in each individual row. I would like to display fewer decimal places here, and insert the given slope distances, while the basic operations of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division can be utilized in Excel by using the plus, minus, asterisk, and forward slash keys respectively, and plenty of parentheses, Excel has functions built in to compute other, more complex operations. Recall that the vertical angle and sloped distances can be related to the horizontal and vertical distances through trigonometry. Here, we can benefit from letting the program compute the sine and cosine functions. Click the Insert Function button next to the formula bar to see more information. The sine function requires that the chosen angle be in radians. The additional information describes how to mathematically convert an angle from degrees to radians. But we can use another function in Excel to do this for us, the radians function. Now the elevation at point A. The point at which the instrument is set is given. The elevation at each survey point can be found by beginning with the elevation at point A, adding the height of the instrument, adding the vertical distance from the instrument to the rod, then subtracting the height of the rod. You might be wondering why is this equation plus or minus the vertical distance? The ground surface might slope upwards towards the rod's position, but it might also slope down. In this case, the vertical distance should be subtracted from the equation, not added. Trigonometry, if set correctly, will indicate the direction, positive or negative, like it has here. This way, we can allow the sign on the vertical distance to account for whether it should be added or subtracted. In Excel, we know that cell references are relative. 
Here, I want each formula in this column to reference the same three cells where I've inserted the given information. To make a cell reference absolute, press F4 on the keyboard after selecting the cell. The two dollar bill symbols next to the column letter and the row number lock those values respectively. Now when this formula is copied down the table, it uses the same given information, but the unique vertical distance to each surveyed point. This gives us our final elevations.